Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little science lesson for everybody. And now science is just one of those things that I'm not really, you know, fussed about. But it's amazing how much care and attention you suddenly give to all the biology and science going on in your body as soon as you become sick. Over the last couple of months, I've been attending lots of appointments and I've been bombarded with all this information about my thyroid glands and the hormones related. And I just thought I'd do a quick science lesson for everybody just in case they didn't know what was going on in that little gland just above your trachea. The thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped organ that runs on top of your windpipe, which is your trachea. It is important because it relates to the hormones that affect certain types of things in your body. For example, your metabolism, your heart rate, your body temperature, and things like your digestion. The pituitary gland and the thyroid gland sort of work hand in hand. The pituitary gland releases something called thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH for short. The release of TSH into the bloodstream then causes the release of the thyroid hormones which are shortened to T3 and T4. The thyroid gland is an example of a negative feedback mechanism. This means the release of the thyroid stimulating hormones is dependent on the amount of release of T3 and T4. If there's too much thyroid hormone detected in the bloodstream, that means that there'll be a less release of the thyroid stimulating hormone. On the other side of this, if there's too little thyroid hormone detected, then there'll be an increase in the thyroid stimulating hormone released by the pituitary gland. In a normally functioning thyroid gland, the levels of TSH and T4 and T3 are kept in balance. The negative feedback mechanism controls the release and keeps the ideal maintained level for all of the thyroid functions. In a hypoactive thyroid gland, it means that the thyroid does not produce enough T3 and T4, and so everything biologically sort of slowed down. This has a knock-on effect to the rate of thyroid stimulating hormone release from the pituitary gland. This causes symptoms such as feeling weak and feeling tired, things such as memory loss and sort of foggy thoughts, as well as an inability to handle cold. In a hypoactive thyroid gland, it means that the thyroid releases too much of this thyroid hormone, this then has a knock-on effect biologically in terms of sort of speeding everything up. And so you lose weight at a very fast rate, your heart rate increases, and you are more likely to be sweaty. Okay, so how do we diagnose these thyroid problems? So you'll get a blood test which will monitor the level of thyroid stimulating hormone and also a blood test to measure the T3 and T4 in your bloodstream. From this, they can determine what's going on with your thyroid hormone levels. If you're hypoactive, it's likely that you'll have to take thyroxine, if you're hyperactive, it means that you might have to take antithyroid medicine to get you back to the normal levels. In thyroid cancer, most commonly, a lump will start presenting itself in your neck. Further to this, you may experience a hoarse voice or a persistent sore throat that doesn't go away for a number of weeks or months. Diagnosing thyroid cancer can also come from blood tests, fine needle aspirations, ultrasounds and biopsies, where they take a collection of the cells to help determine if it's a benign lump, if it's cancerous, and then what kind of cancer you have. Around 1 in 20 of the goiters and lumps found in the neck end up being cancer. So in everyone's thyroid gland, it has to do with the uptake of iodine from the food that we eat. Iodine is then used by the thyroid gland to produce the T3 and T4 thyroid hormones. Cool, okay, so the body needs iodine to make sure that it can then produce these thyroid hormones to keep the TSH and everything in balance, so things like your metabolism are all kept at a constant rate. If iodine is not available or insufficient in the diet, then the thyroid cannot produce the sufficient amount of hormones needed to keep everything running as normal. This is why there are recommendations of how much iodine you should have in your diet, as it is really important for the thyroid to produce these hormones. So with the knowledge that the thyroid absorbs iodine, this can then be used to treat thyroid cancer. Usually post-surgery, either a total thyroidectomy or a lobectomy, you'll receive radioactive iodine. This is where a radioactive tablet of iodine is taken and then the remaining cells in the thyroid sort of sop up all this radioactivity. This then kills the remaining thyroid cells, kills any cancer cells, which is great because it reduces the likelihood of the cancer spreading or the cancer returning. This is great news for people like me because it means that even though I'm having cancer at a young age, with the use of this treatment, it reduces the likelihood of cancer returning. I hope everyone's learned something from this video, and if not, then just keep me watching it till you do learn something. I think it's really important to raise awareness of something such as the thyroid gland, as before I was diagnosed with my cancer, there wasn't really much I knew about it. And now I have all this information, I'm just like, gosh, it is quite important to our health and metabolism and things like that. Over my course of treatment, I have really learned that 
your health is very important to you. So the more you know, the more likely you are to be a healthy, fit young person, live longer and have a better quality of life. Please keep following my blog. It's really nice to get all the positive comments from everybody. I have my radioactive iodine at the end of this month. So I'm really looking forward to finally beating this and just becoming a normal person again. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos and check out my blog. I'll put it in the link below. Thank you. Bye.